What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be going over how we can fix up our reloading system in our first person shooter tutorial series. So, when we initially implemented the re reloading system, what we did is if we ran out of bullets and tried to shoot, we would reload. We can also reload by pressing the reload button. However, this was all we did. So we were allowed to reload when we had full ammo in our clip. We were allowed to perform a reload even if we had no more ammo to put in our weapon. And we were allowed to reload while doing other actions such as shooting and things. We have fixed the issues with reloading during other actions, but if you try reloading now when you either don't have any reserve ammo or when you don't have any more ammo to put in your clip, you can still do that. So you can see I'm pressing the reload button, I'm not reloading. I shoot one bullet and I can reload. Also, if I am to use up all my ammo, okay, you see I have four reserve bullets. So if I shoot five bullets, I can reload the four. I've got 11 bullets. I can no longer reload. If I try to reload at this point, an out of ammo pop-up appears at the bottom. Now we created this out of ammo pop-up a little bit ago, but we never actually implemented it. We just set it on the HUD so that we could see it for the future. We're going to actually implement it today and make it swap. So when we switch weapons, if we switch to a weapon that is not out of ammo, then we will get the pop-up to disappear. So it will keep track of, anytime I try and reload with a weapon and I don't have any more ammo, the out of ammo pop-up will actually appear on the HUD. And then we swap to a weapon where we can actually use it and we have ammo for it. The out of ammo pop-up will not pop up. So we're gonna cover all that today. And we're basically going to just get our reload system working fully with the logic that it should work, not just the standard reload logic but the logic with all of our other fire logic that is in the game and we're also going to go over that out of ammo logic that we set up but never actually put into the game so before we go any farther i believe this is episode 34 of the first person shooter tutorial series and so we have plenty plenty more work to do however this is a good start and if you'd like to get caught up on everything we've done to this point so that you can follow along i'll link this playlist in that top right corner right here so you can get caught up on everything that we've done to date in the series i will also link this episode right here which is the reloading episode where we went over the initial logic for the reloading which of course we will be overriding and updating today All right, let's get started. So this is gonna be a pretty basic episode today, but it's super important. So let's make sure we do everything correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go into my FPS tutorial character.h, and I'm gonna scroll down. We're gonna actually add an event. Uh, we're gonna have two events here that we can call in our blueprint to trigger the out of ammo pop-up. So we're going to have one to enable it, display it to the user, and then one to hide it as well. Now, in the series, I had actually created this event, but we never filled it out in the character blueprint. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over both of these, and then we'll set them up toward the end of the episode after we cover the rest of the reloading stuff. But I want to create these now so that when we build, these are already here, and we can just fill out the logic in the blueprint when we're ready. So FPS Toro character dot H going to make two blueprint implementable events. It's important because that means we don't fill out any of the logic in code. Rather, we call the function in code or from a blueprint, and then the logic is handled in the blueprint. So I have one that's called trigger out of ammo pop-up, and then hide out of ammo pop-up. You could also change this to display out of ammo pop-up or something like that. But basically, this is going to show the out of ammo pop-up on the HUD for the user, and this is going to hide it, that way the user can no longer see it. Okay, pretty simple stuff. Again, you don't even have to fill them out in the CPP. In fact, you can't because they are blueprint implementable events. So they are filled out in the blueprints. All right, now let's go over some more reloading logic. So if we scroll down, in our CPP file, we have a function 
called manual reload and reload weapon. Now, manual reload is basically the reload when you press an input. It doesn't really have to be different from reload weapon in any way. It's just so that we can call this function to trigger the reload weapon function once we press the reload button. Okay, so we don't have to change anything with the manual reload function today. Specifically, what we're going to be looking at is the reload weapon function. Now, this will probably look a little bit different than what you're used to. So what we were doing before is we were checking to see if the weapon existed, and I should type this out. Okay, so if the weapon currently exists at this index. So if we have a weapon that the player is using and that they are going to be attempting to reload. We had that, and what we were doing is we were just automatically saying is reloading is true. We were forcing them to stop sprinting, stop zooming in, uh, hide the crosshairs, and then we were calculating the ammo. That's all good, but notice how I've added two extra if statements. So think about it. If the weapon existed, we were just allowed to reload at any point in time. We didn't do any other logic, checking if we had ammo, checking if we were out of ammo or even needed to reload. And then I also have an else in here for the out of ammo pop-up, which we'll cover in a few minutes. Okay. So let's take a step back and let's look at these if statements now. So if the weapon exists, we're then going to check that weapon to check its clip ammo. Remember, clip ammo is how much ammo it currently has before you're out of ammo and have to reload. So for example, these numbers in the bottom right here, I have 12 and 30. 30 is my reserve ammo. That's how many bullets can be reloaded into this weapon. I shot three bullets, so I can reload three bullets. And you can see that I have 27 reserve ammo. But that number on the left there, 12, is how much is in my clip. It's how much I can have at one time. Once I run out, I have to reload. I have no, no choice because I don't have any more bullets or projectiles in my weapon. So we check the clip ammo and make sure it's not equal to the maximum clip ammo. This is because max clip ammo is what determines what each weapon can hold. So in this case, that pistol, that blaster, this is technically considered a pistol in the game, but this blaster here can hold 12 ammo in one clip. So that's the max clip ammo. My clip ammo goes down as I shoot. So if the clip ammo is equal to the max clip ammo, we have no reason to reload. Now, it's not really hurting anything. You could allow the user, the player, to reload if they want to when they have max clip ammo. But it could be annoying, and also they could have pressed the button on, you know, by accident. So I recommend making it to where if the ammo and the weapon in the clip is equal to the maximum clip ammo to not allow them to reload... So basically, we only want to reload if that is not the case, not equal to max clip ammo. Okay? Now, there is another if statement in here that we have. All right? This doesn't have an else, that first if statement here. This has no else. We have another if statement here. Now, this if statement, what we're doing is we're checking to see if the character has any reserve ammo for the type if they do we will be able to reload but if they don't then we're going to pop up our out of ammo pop up because at this point we don't have anything else to put into the gun so i'm not even going to try to reload i can't put anything else in there i don't have any ammo now to do this you could just check you know if you have any more ammo period however since we have different types of ammo in our game, we have to make sure that the weapon we're trying to reload is of a certain type, and then we check against that ammo type. So in this case, and in the case of something like Apex Legends, if I have a Havoc and I have energy ammo, then it's not gonna, I'm not able to put light ammo into that. So that specific case is what we're dealing with here. We have to make sure that we have the correct type of ammo and we have a value greater than zero before we try and do any reloading logic. So... How it works is this. I grab the current weapon and I grab the weapon type. I check if it's equal to this type, assault rifle. And my assault rifle ammo is greater than zero. Or this is two bars, okay? Two straight lines. This is the or symbol, meaning this condition or this condition 
or this condition. Okay. So if it's an assault rifle and we have more than zero assault rifle ammo, great, we can start the reload. But if it's either not an assault rifle or we don't have any, uh, we don't have more assault rifle ammo than zero, we can't start the reload. Then we go to the next one. Is this a pistol? If it is a pistol, we check and see if we have more than zero pistol ammo. If we do, great, start the reload. If we don't, go to the final check here. We check to see if our weapon is of type submachine gun. If it is, we check and see if the submachine gun ammo is greater than zero. If it's not, then we can't start the reload. But if it is, we can start the reload. Okay, so we basically just added two more if statements in here to our reloading logic because there are two cases we want to catch. Either we're out of ammo or we have no reason to reload because we have the maximum amount of ammo in the clip that we can hold. And then we do all of our basic stuff like forcing the is reload boolean to true, stopping these certain states, and calling calculate ammo. Calculate ammo is where we determine how much ammo was reloaded into the weapon so that we can draw from the reserves and take away from that. And you can see we have an else here. This else is tied to this if statement we were going over. So else, if none of those conditions are true, we're going to call our trigger out of ammo pop-up function here. By calling that here, that means if we attempt to reload and none of these conditions are true, we're going to pop up that uh, little out of ammo widget on our character HUD. Now there is one other, it's a very, very small case, but there is one other situation where we're going to want to call the trigger out of ammo pop up currently. We have this function right here, the calculate ammo function. It takes in the type of ammo that we are using, determines if we have enough ammo left, and based on the weapon in the clip that it has to refill and other factors, we'll go ahead and return the proper ammo. Now in the case of you lose ammo after you start a successful reload. Now, I don't know of a specific case and we definitely don't have one here, but I wanted to be thorough. So say you start a reload and ammo is stolen from you. Say, um, let's go back to the Apex example just to stay consistent. There are Loba shops and they can take things off the ground. Say in your game, there's an ability that can take ammo from other players or something similar. If you're able to lose the ammo that you have or drop the ammo that you have while you're reloading, and you want to make sure that you stop that function from occurring, um, and you, you still want to pop up the trigger out of ammo at that point because you want to make sure that they are they know they're out of ammo, even if the reload begun had begun and then for some reason had to be stopped. We're going to trigger it. It's a very very specific case, but I just wanted to bring it up. So this in calculate ammo, we were checking to see if the ammo amount passed in was greater than zero. If it becomes else at any point, because again, we go through this part of the function, but by the time we're calculating ammo, it somehow becomes zero magically or less than zero, then what we want to do is trigger that pop-up anyway. So we have two safeguards here. And since they're just changing the visibility, it's not like it's popping up the widget two times or anything like that. Now, um, I don't have, we have the ability to pick up different things in the world, but we we don't have a finalized like pickup ammo system just yet. So we don't have a way to get the ammo back properly other than by, uh, you know, getting those little ammo pickups on the ground. But like I said, there's a lot more we have to do with that. So ignoring that for now, the only place that I actually change to hide the pop up is when we switch weapons. So if we go to the switch to next primary weapon function, at the top of the function, I just go ahead and hide the out of ammo pop up. Now, as it says in this comment here, if we swap to a weapon and that weapon is out of ammo, then we would want to pop up the widget again. So it's fine to just call hide no matter what, call the hide out of ammo pop up. Um, you could alternatively check and see if the weapon you're swapping to and its type Ha if you have ammo, just like we checked in the reload function, but really I think that's a lot more work than is necessary. So I'm just calling hide out of ammo pop up here for now. You could also hide it uh, when you pick up the ammo in the future, and that's what we will be doing. So if we are holding a weapon that's out of ammo and we get more ammo for it, we can uh, hide the pop up and then of course make the player reload their gun. 
All right, and at that point, it's pretty much all we have for the, the reloading stuff. Important, but pretty small fixes. Let's now take a look at the blueprints. So if we go into Unreal, and specifically we want to go to the uh, base character BP, we're going to fill out the two events that I was just telling you about that we created at the start of the episode. So in the base character blueprint, we have this HUD reference that gets set up in begin play. Basically, we create the character HUD widget and we set a reference to it so we can use it later. This is something we've already done, but this HUD reference variable is the important part here. Now, assuming this is valid, we can go ahead and just use the out of ammo text on that widget and set the visibility. So in case you did not set this up yet, we'll go ahead and show you that widget real quick. This is the character HUD. I have shields and health. These are abilities with uh, cooldowns. Weapon name, the clip ammo, the maximum amount of ammo. Press E to equip item, so an item prompt when we're close enough to pick up uh, any sort of item. And then the out of ammo text. So this is literally text that's a variable. I've set it to a certain spot on the screen. I don't have anything related to it in the event graph or anything like that. So it's not tricky, it's not complicated. It's just a text widget right here that is a variable that we can grab. Okay, make sure that the eye is visible so you can see it. And there you go. That's what we're going to be doing. So it's super simple. We're going to grab our HUD reference, get it. We're going to convert it to a validated get, basically saying if this is valid, we can do this. Otherwise, don't try and do this because we'll get errors or in a package build, we may even crash. Okay, if it is valid, we want to drag off the HUD reference, get our text, which I've called out of ammo text, get it. And then call set visibility on it. For the trigger out of ammo pop-up, I want to set it to be visible. For the hide out of ammo pop-up, I want to set it to be hidden. And with that, guys, there you go. We are golden. So now we can play our game, run around, shoot our ammo, reload when we are intended to reload, and not when we're intended not to be able to reload. We can use up all of our ammo, notify the player that they are out of ammo, and we can even trigger the pop-up to go away when we swap weapons and we're no longer out of ammo. Like for example, if I try and shoot and I'm out of ammo, I want to trigger the out of ammo prompt, of course. However, if I switch to the bruiser, I am not out of ammo. So the prompt should be gone. We're no longer out of ammo. All right guys, and that's pretty much it for today's episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do. It is completely free. I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you guys for continuing to support me. I can't wait to see where we can bring these series. This one's a ton of fun to work on. If you had any issues with this episode or any of the episodes in the series, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to assist you again completely free. Otherwise, guys, that's all I got. So like I said, I'm Sean the Bro. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.